Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian National Mathematical Olympiad for 9th graders 2022 problem number 3. We wish to find all functions f and g from the set of real numbers into itself satisfying the following functional equation. f of x plus f of y equals, equals uh, the floor of g of x plus y for all real numbers x and y. Here are my hints for this problem. First, set x to be 0, y to be 0, to show that 2f of 0 equals uh, the floor of g of 0. Then, let y, just, let y be 0, to show that f of x equals floor of g of x minus 1 half floor of g of 0. And now, let h be the following function, uh, h of x equals the, the floor of g of x minus the floor of g of 0. Well, it goes from the set of real numbers into the set of integers, show that it satisfies Cauchy functional equation. And now, justify that only such function, remember that it goes into the set of integers, the only such function is the zero function. So give this problem a try and I will see you in just a minute. All right, so let's call this equation asterisk and let's start with setting x and y to be zero in our condition asterisk. Then we have the following, 2f of zero equals floor of g of zero, which, which of course implies that f of zero equals one half floor of g of zero. All right, now let's set just y to be zero in our condition asterisk. And now, now we have the following, f of x plus f of zero equals floor of g of x. But what is f of zero? Well, f of zero is one half floor of g of zero, so we have f of x equals floor of g of x minus one half floor of g of zero. And this allows us to rewrite our equation asterisk. So now asterisk becomes, becomes the following equation, floor of g of x, and now let's combine it, because from this term we will have minus one half floor of g of zero, from this likewise, so we will have plus floor of g of y minus floor of g of zero equals floor of g of x plus y. And now I will do the following, I will subtract floor of g of zero from both sides, so I will have floor of g of x minus floor of g of 0 plus floor of g of y minus floor of g of 0 equals floor of g of x plus y minus floor of g of 0. All right, and now let's call, because notice that these terms are of the form h of x, these two terms are of the form h of y, and these two terms are of the form h of x plus y. So now let's set, let h go from the set of real numbers. Notice that, of course, floor of anything is an integer. If we subtract two integers, we have integer once again. So let h go from the set of real numbers into the set of integers where h of x equals floor of g of x minus floor of g of zero for any real number x. Notice that then, after calling our function like that, it turns out that it satisfies Cauchy functional equation. All right, but now, this means 
let's do it like that. It is pretty easy to verify by easy induction. You will see that for any positive integer n and for any real number x, n times h of x equals h of x n or nx maybe. I will leave uh, verification to you. It's very easy to verify it by induction. All right, but now we can rewrite it in the following way. For any integer n, positive integer n, and for any real number x, n times h of x over n equals h of x. All right. But now, let's see what happens. Remember that h of x over n, this is an integer, because our function goes from the set of real numbers into the set of integers. So the left-hand side, it's n times some integer, which means that for any real number, it implies, it is implied, that for any positive integer n and for every real number x, in particular, h of x is divisible by n. All right, remember, for any n, well, the only number which is divisible by any, by every positive integer n, is zero. Only zero is divisible by everything. So now we know that h of x equals zero for every real number x. And now we are almost done, because now we can go back to our function g and to our function uh, f so now now we know now we get get what exactly g of x go back to g of x well maybe let's go to f of x f of x first f of x it was the floor of g of x minus one half g, g of zero uh, and what about floor of we can write in like that floor of g of x minus floor of g of zero plus one half floor of g of zero and remember that this part was just uh, h of x which is zero so we get this all equals one half floor of g of zero. All right, but uh, well, this is some integer. So it's n over two for some integer n. Yes, because floor of g of zero is some constant. All right, and what about function, uh, what about function g? Well, notice that, uh, since h of x equals zero, we get that floor of g of x equals floor of g of zero, and we have called this number n. So, well, was, when does it happen? Well, it happens exactly when. So, the range of our function the range of our function is contained in the interval from n to n plus 1. And really, these are our solutions. So we will do verification, but uh, we have established that f of x equals n over 2. It's not a mistake. Here is x, here is n. It's not a mistake. It's a constant function. And well, g is any function going from the set of real numbers into the interval n and plus 1, where n is any integer whatsoever. And now let's do verification. Let's do verification. Well, on the left-hand side, we have 
f of x plus f of y. So it's n over 2 plus n over 2, so it's n. And on the right hand side, we have floor of g of x plus y. But now, since our function g goes into the interval n, n plus 1, it's just n. So it's equal. So our solutions are pairs of function where f is constant, it's some integer over 2, and g. It's any function, but its range has to be a subset of this interval. And that closes our problem. So, solutions. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new this time, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.